Good morning. I'm Campbell McCurry. I'm Vice President, Capital Markets and Best Capital here in New York. Welcome to the Invest Capital, Capital Inc. Live webinar with Casiar Gold Corp. Casiar trades on the TSX, V is GLDC, and on the OTCQV as CGLCF. Hope you'll enjoy today's program. It will also be available in replay mode. Feel free to chat in your questions in the question pane of the GoToWebinar control panel or simply email them in and we'll try and ask the questions in real time. Uh, Anvis Capital is a New York-based specialist investment management and corporate finance firm focused solely on the natural resources space. Uh, please note, this call is for informational purposes only. Uh, very pleased to have with us today, uh, Marco Rock. Marco is the president and CEO of Casiar and is a private banker and commodity specialist by background and is also a co-founder of Raina Silver and Arabian Shield Resources. He's a CFA charter holder. Following the formal presentations, members of Anvest Capital will ask questions of management. Uh, we'll also look forward to any questions that uh, you would send in. And uh, if you want, Mark, I want to share your screen. And uh, yep, there we go. Thank you, Campbell. Screen mode, and uh, you have the floor. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So, whoops. Uh, so Cassiar is uh, a Canadian explorer. Uh, we're located in Northern BC. We have uh, a million ounce resource and we're drilling uh, in search of uh, next multi-million ounce camp uh, in uh, British Columbia in Canada. Uh, I'll bring your attention to the cautionary for your looking statements. Um, so Cassiar Gold, we have a foundational resource, uh, 43101 uh, compliant, 1 million ounces at uh, 1.43 grams per ton, already identified, located in uh, Northern British Columbia, uh, which is a safe, a safe jurisdiction with full community support and engagement. We ha have really outstanding infrastructure, uh, Highway 37 bisects our property. We have a permitted mill, uh, multiple property access roads, camp, tilings, as well as mine permits. We, also, we are still relatively undervalued on a per ounce basis compared to the industry peers. Uh, and uh, we have an amazing world-class team, uh, which is, uh, keeps on uh, increasing and getting better as well. Uh, Doug Kerwin, David Rees were just announced uh, and added to the advisor team last week. Uh, James Maxwell, Steve Ladwin, or, or Chris Stewart, just to name a few. Uh, but as I mentioned, the, the, the really exciting thing is uh, the multi-million ounce potential that we have. Uh, and that comes uh, from the potential to grow our bulk tonnage resource, our foundational resource, as well as uh, which is uh, a bulk tonnage grade, 1.43 grams per ton. Uh, but more excitingly as well, uh, the high grade uh, coming from the south part of our property where we already have an historical resource and we, where we have uh, 15 to 25 uh, gram per ton uh, type material. So starting with some of the people uh, that I really would like to highlight, uh, uh, Steve Ledwin is our uh, largest uh, individual shareholder. Uh, he is uh, a board member since March uh, from when he retired uh, from uh, IM Gold, where he was a president and CEO. Uh, also have Chris Stewart on the board. He's a mining engineer, uh, former president and COO of uh, McEwen Mining. Uh, Wilson Jen is a geo and uh, the CEO of our largest shareholder and the vendor of our now 100% own uh, Cassiar Gold property. Um, then we have more on the technical side. Uh, we've just added, as I mentioned, David Rees uh, as a technical advisor. He's a structural geologist. Uh, he has, uh, he's also uh, uh, one of the foremost orogenic gold experts in the world, has worked in the, some of the most, uh, uh, you know, some of the biggest uh, orogenic gold uh, mines uh, in the world, as well as uh, deposits. Um, Casey Gladwin, our VP of Exploration, and James Maxwell, our advisor. Uh, they're both quite instrumental in taking uh, Sabina from uh, discovery to uh, over 5 million ounces. Um, and then we have uh, Doug Kerwin. Uh, Doug is, uh, uh, is really uh, one of the most uh, you know, experienced and uh, successful geologists I know. Uh, he is uh, really the, the, the vision uh, for, for the multi-million ounce potential is, uh, is really his. Um, he, he really likes the, 
the the potential for you know to 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 grow the the bulk tonnage resource uh, but uh, what uh, he is really excited is uh, the high grade potential uh, the kind of uh, material you see here on the bottom of the page the gold uh, the high grade gold in quartz veins uh, that we have at south cassiar uh, which is really the focus for our next year's drilling campaign um, and which has the potential to 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 host a multi-million ounce deposit uh, a little bit of our capital structure we have uh, just over uh, roughly over 50 uh, 54 million uh, shares outstanding um we are trading just under 60 cents uh which uh, you know brings our market cap just over 3 million uh, canadian dollars which is a very attractive uh, valuation um we've just closed the financing uh last week uh on monday uh, we've added a substantial number of institutional shareholders that are actually not named here yet uh but uh it's uh you know uh, the the typical uh, or you know some of the best names you can see on the on the market in terms of institutional shareholders uh, resource funds uh it's so it, it it was really good to be able to add them uh, to the uh to the share registry and institutionalize our share registry uh, substantially um so that's uh, that was uh, that was really good to see um and um um and yeah so uh, so it's uh, it's that's 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 something that uh, you know we're we're very happy with and uh, and uh, i i believe it's quite positive because we're now fully financed for our drill campaign next year which is a uh, 15000 meters focused on a high grade uh, a little bit about uh, our valuation and some of the peers. Um, uh, so the blue bar stand for uh, enterprise value, um, and uh, and you can you, and uh, you can see it on the left hand side. Uh, on the right hand side is the uh, or the yellow circle stand uh, for EV per ounce. So uh, uh, on the EV per ounce, which I think is one of the best uh, metrics to uh, to compare projects. Uh, we are still quite undervalued compared to many of our peers. Of course, Victoria Gold is not necessarily a peer; it's a producing company, uh, but they have uh, uh, they have they're located in Yukon. Uh, they're operating using a head grade of uh, 0.65 grams per ton and making uh, quite a bit of money, and their shareholders quite happy too. Um, so uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's uh, it's more of an as aspirational uh, comparable. But some of the others are actually good comparables. Uh, some orogenic gold type uh, projects, uh, some uh, North uh, North American or uh, BC uh, projects uh, or Golden Triangle, uh, and uh, on a per ounce basis, uh, uh, most of them or all of them actually uh, quite quite more uh, uh, higher, uh, um, you know, have a higher value on a per ounce basis than than Cassiar. So. We we want to narrow that gap. Uh, some of them don't even have a resource, so uh, most of their uh, of uh, of uh, the um, you know valuation comes from you know the uh, the excitement and the speculation coming from uh, the drilling and um, and uh, you know the uh, the potential that those deposits may have. So um, so really uh, that really I think it just this highlights uh, the opportunity that we have here. Uh, and the opportunity for the re-rates that we have here. Uh, given that we are fully financed, uh, we still have drill results uh, that will be coming over the next few weeks from our drill campaign uh, this year. And uh, we're fully financed for uh, 15,000 meters next year, which will be focused on, uh, on the high grade. <coughs> Excuse me. So in terms of our main assets, uh, they're both located in uh, British Columbia. Our secondary asset is Sheep Creek, 100% owned. Uh, it's actually quite a prospective uh, property, orogenic gold, uh, but uh, uh, we won't be uh, focusing any of, your, of our intention uh, this year or next year into it, um, given our limited resources. So our focus is entirely at, at Cassiar Gold, and that's actually the reason uh, we've changed the name to Cassiar Gold as well. We, we already have a million ounces at Cassiar. We have uh, a good grade, 1.43 grams per ton. is actually quite a nice grade when you take in consideration that is a uh, flat line near surface, almost no overburden. Uh, and then, as I mentioned more excitingly, at South Cassiar, 
uh, or Table Mountain. That's where we have some really high grade uh, targets that will be the focus for uh, for next year. Uh, so uh, zooming in into uh, our Cassia Gold property is a very a substantial land package, 56,000 hectares. Um, uh, with, which is surrounded by infrastructure. So the resource itself uh, sits on that little orange smudge there um, uh, on top of the yellow oval, um, literally uh, next to the highway. Uh, so in terms of logistics and access, is, uh, it's, uh, it, you know, it couldn't be better and easier for us. Um, we have multiple property access roads. We have a permitted mill, <coughs> 300 tons per day gravity flotation we have um, gold tailing six, an estimated 600,000 tons uh, uh, which have been tested at around one gram per ton this is not 4311 compliance uh, we also have an historical resource uh, at South Cassiar which I'll uh, touch uh, in later and uh, uh, and you know our prospectivity is not just around the resource itself or the, the, or the historical resource or the high grade. We have a very big land package and uh, you know, there's opportunity to have uh, uh, more, uh, we have more prospects like the resource like Taurus, uh, as well as uh, you know, the, the system can be really big. So we've, uh, the, the, the old timers uh, the pro producing uh, only scratch the surface. So uh, we can only speculate how, uh, how big the system may be. Uh, so this this is a picture of uh, our property, you know, looking from uh, from kind of uh, northwest uh, into our property. You can see, uh, you know, the Cassia Road uh, here. We have the deposits, um, and uh, just uh, just south of it, uh, we have uh, the mill sites, and as well as the the portals, and and then uh, the more alpine part of our property. That's where that's. Table Mountain or South Cassia, that's where we have the, the high grade and the bulk tonnage is located here at the bottom of the valley at Taurus. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, it, this picture just gives you a good, uh, a good idea of, uh, of the lay of the land. Um, as, a, as an interesting note, uh, we could technically drill throughout the winter at Taurus at the bottom of the valley. But, you know, as you can imagine, we go up the, up the mountain in, during the winter, you know, the conditions in Northern BC uh, get a little bit more difficult and challenging to drill throughout the winter. <coughs> Excuse me. This is um, the picture of our mill. It's actually, it doesn't look too bad. Um, 300 tons per day was built uh, in 1986. Gravity of flotation, uh, so it's it's there. It's uh, fully permitted. Uh, it's relatively small uh, for um, for what we believe our potential uh, is, but uh, it's uh, it's definitely good to have a permitted mill on site. Uh, so narrowing down uh, and focusing on on the resource, uh, we can look at the top table here. Uh, uh, our resource, uh, you know, using a cutoff rate of 0 0.7 uh, grams per ton, which is actually quite high uh, we have a, a grade of 1.43 grams per ton uh, if you can look at the long section at the bottom here you can see how shallow the resource is most of the resource is less than 100 meters deep um, and uh, and you know it's flat lying near surface you know I'm not a mining engineer but I can imagine the open pit here um, and uh, uh, and the focus of the drill campaign this season, the 5,000 meters uh, really was was the goal to basically, given that the the resource is open in multiple directions at depth and as well as laterally, uh, it is really to test uh, um, you know those uh, those extensions uh, as well as doing some infill and exploration. The infill will be obviously on some gaps you have in the in the resource model where we we, we feel we could add the uh, we could add some houses and we we were basically already successful in uh, in some of those at least in the, in the first seven drill holes uh, we already had quite a bit of success uh, also uh, looking here into this uh, cross section <coughs> that really shows you or gives you a, even a better view of um, how shallow the resource is you can see the orange part is the mineralized part um, of our you know uh, basically where the mineralization is uh, you can see uh, basically how the overburden is almost non-existent, uh, mostly just here on the right side, which is the north side, 
you can have a little bit of uh, overburden, but it's it's uh, very little, and it's uh, uh, it's uh, you know it, it's where we have uh, uh, the the smaller parts uh, of uh, of of the deposit. So you know this just gives you a very clear image of um, you know basically how shallow and how much or how little in this case uh, overburden. Uh, we have, uh, which makes uh, uh, our grade uh, all that more attractive. Uh, so, uh, you know, as I mentioned, the 5,000 meter drill campaign uh, was very much focused in um, basically uh, extending, uh, you know, the envelope of known mineralization, uh, also um, putting some drill holes in, in some some gaps on the on the on the um, on the on the model. So. Um, you know our our the 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 drill results that we've released uh, earlier this week um, uh, are are already here. So uh, it, they were you know very successful. The, the first seven drill holes out of our uh, 24 drill hole campaign, uh, all of them hit mineralization. Some of them some really inter, uh, some really good intersections. Uh, you know, 23.75 meters at 1.8 uh, grams per ton, or you know, nearly five uh, five meters at nearly four grams per ton, um, or nearly 15 meters at 2.3 grams per ton. So some really good interceptions. Um, uh, these ones here in the middle actually were where we have the the, the gap in the model. Uh, so it, it's really good because uh, you know we had some really nice interceptions there. Uh, where we have a gap, so it lends to the potential to add this gap uh, uh, to the uh, to the to to, to the ounces. Uh, we also have other uh, other drill holes where, which you know uh, could have been in infill at the top, and there were uh, testing extensions at the bottom, uh, so they confirmed the historical results as well. And uh, you know, as you can see as well, the, the the grades here are actually also higher. Than the grades that we have in the resource, so that's something that uh, is really positive as well. So you know we're 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 very excited for for what's coming uh, next over the next few weeks, um, but uh, uh, we have to stay tuned to 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 see what's coming. So we'll be probably releasing results until you know the first half of of December, coming from this uh, drill campaign that we just wrapped um, basically uh, ten days ago. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so here are some uh, some of the highlights. Uh, you know, I won't bore you with uh, all of, all of the details uh, from from the drill holes, but you can see some uh, in yellow some of the highest uh, or most interesting interceptions. You can also, if you look at the table, you can see that mineralization actually starts basically from the top, from the top of the holes. Uh, so uh, that's something to to bear in mind as well, as I mentioned. Almost no overburden mineralization coming from the top, uh, which is really what you want to see. Um, for you know, it, it makes the, uh, the the production scenario all that more economic. Uh, this slide talks a little bit about uh, uh, the metallurgy. Uh, so a lot of people ask me about the metallurgy. Uh, so this this slide really summarizes the the met studies that we've made specifically for the bulk tonnage resource. So for our 43101 resource, uh, so uh, uh, basically there's multiple studies done. Uh, for uh, less than five percent of the ore is uh, refractory. Over 95 percent of it is uh, uh, is free milling, uh, and uh, we have some really good recoveries. Of course, on the refractory ore, which is you know the smallest part of in you know a very little a very small part of our resource the recoveries are 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 not good you know given that it's refractory but uh the the recoveries on the on the um, um on the on the rest of the the, the resource the majority over 95 percent is on the high 70s which is which is really good to see uh just as a side note uh the 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 recoveries that uh, the old timers had at uh at the at the high grade uh, was actually quite high, so it was uh, in the high 90s. Uh, but that that material was uh, 15 to 25 grams per ton, so um, it's a different type of material. But it's worthwhile mentioning that, given that uh, <laughs> the focus uh, for next year uh, will be uh, the high grade uh, at South Cassiar. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to to leave that in mind. So 
So basically taking a step back, um, so wrapping up the, the, the resource and, and the, the growth of it. So we'll, we'll still have some, uh, some more drill holes to release uh, of our 24 drill hole program. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we're very excited for what's coming. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Um, but uh, just taking a step back into the potential of our property. So, so we, we re there's really two stories here. We have the, the bulk tonnage resource that uh, uh, we are uh, uh, intending to grow and we're drilling to grow it. Um, we don't expect the grade there to, to, to change much, but what we want is to add ounces. But then at the south part of our property, that's where we have the, the exciting uh, the exciting high grade, the exciting part, uh, the more exciting part of our story, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, it has in itself a multi-million ounce potential, is an orogenic gold setting, which typically uh, occurs in the, you know, stacked veins, vertical and horizontal, uh, that can just keep going forever, uh, you know, like the, the case of Barkerville or Fosterville. Um, so so that's, that's really what we're looking for. Uh, the old timers uh, only scratched the surface. Uh, they produced. Uh, you can see some of the uh, some of the veins that are identified here on the southern part of our property, and that's really going to be the focus. So narrowing down to those, uh, you can see on the bottom of this table the historical production from these high-grade veins, uh, mostly in the 70s and 80s. And the reason why we have all the infrastructure that we have. Uh, so you can see majority of it is. Very, very high grades, 17, 21 gram, grams per ton. We also have uh, an historical resource. It's not 43101, it's historical, but uh, it's relatively small. It's less than 100,000 ounces, but it has very nice grades. The indicator part is eight, eight, 18 grams. Uh, the infer part of our resource is 24 grams per ton. So that's, uh, that's you know, really a, a nice grade. And that's the kind of grade we are uh, basically aiming at, if you look at the, at the map here on the right, uh, you can see in uh, red some of the veins that have already been mined, but also in purple some of the veins that are still sitting there and which, uh, you know, basically are the, uh, um, the, the, the bullseye or, or the start for our uh, focus in our exploration campaign for 2021. So we have 15,000 meters uh, you know, we're fully financed for a 15,000 meter drill program for next year. Uh, we are, you know, currently currently working hard in uh, in defining these targets, uh, and you know, we're we're basically starting from uh, from these veins that are, you know, that are still there in this resource that we have here, and work our way out in understand, you know, and you know, out and down uh, as we uh, try to try to find the. Uh, uh, you know the continuation of these veins and understand the system better, and uh, and basically, in addition to growing our bulk tonnage uh, side of our resource, uh, we also intend to grow this high grade uh, side of the resource, which is you know as you can imagine very exciting, uh, and uh, you know it's uh, it, it's uh, it, it's really uh, going going to be uh, you know. Uh, uh, very uh, a fundamental change for the for the you know the, the company's prospect as uh, you know as we as we focus on this uh, on this high grade. So that's uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, so I'm just uh, recapping uh, in terms of the catalysts coming coming forwards. Uh, we're still waiting on assays uh, from our 5,000 meter drill program from this summer, which is a total of 24 drill holes. Uh, we expect to release all of them. Uh, by uh, by uh, uh, mid December, uh, unless we have some uh, some issues at the lab, which you know the labs have been taking some time coming back with the results. So especially if there's any issues with the QAQC or quality control, uh, we just uh, uh, that might delay, but we don't we don't expect delays. Uh, we continue to achieve our corporal milestones. We had uh, some very uh, busy uh, couple of quarters. Uh, we've completed two raises, completed a name change, add, added advisors, um, and uh, you know uh, increased substantially the uh, the institutional shareholder base, uh, mostly via the, the financings. Um, and now we are working quite hard uh, on the marketing campaign, uh, you know, which is this webinar is also part of. Uh, we're doing a digital marketing. Uh, we are, you know, enrolling in several conferences and really trying to get the word out as we release these results and um, 
uh, you know, we show what we have um, in terms of resource, uh, in terms of the potential to grow, um, as well uh, as uh, you know what uh, what we are going to be drilling uh, uh, next year, starting Q2, as soon as weather allows at uh, at uh, at South Cassia. Um, after the completion of this uh, drill campaign, there's also the potential for. Uh, uh, for a resource update, uh, once we have the full picture from the from the drilling campaign, uh, we will be uh, um, you know informing the market of, about uh, our plans regarding that. So so that might be coming down the pipe. Uh, so stay tuned for that as well. So uh, that's uh, that's pretty much it. So just to recap, we have a, a you know an already quite good foundational resource that's a very nice grade, especially if you consider the jurisdiction, the infrastructure. Uh, that we have, uh, so in that sense, we're quite underval undervalued on a per ounce basis. We have an amazing team uh, that uh, you know we can want to continue to improve, and then we have a multi-million ounce potential. And this comes from the potential to to increase uh, uh, the, the the resource space that is bulk tonnage, as well as growing a multi-million ounce uh, uh, high grade uh, resource at uh, at South Cassia. So that's it. Sure. Thank you. Uh, I think we have some time for for some questions. Um, first, the a very practical one: How do we change our old stock certificates to the new one? <laughs> <laughs> Send me an email. I can I can help it out. I'll yeah. do that. <laughs> uh, good. Uh, the presentation deck on your website shows your institutional ownership at 24% compared with 11% back in August. Did you state that last week's financing will increase that to 24%? Yeah. Okay. Um, considering the 37% insider ownership and the 24% uh, institutional ownership, how would you describe your trading liquidity, particularly in the U.S. versus the via, particularly in the U.S. via the, your OTC QB listing? Yeah. I think you know. I think uh, I think our, our liquidity is, is still relatively low. Um, I think uh, the people that uh, had a chance to look at this opportunity, I think they recognize the potential. Uh, but we definitely need to attract uh, some some retail investors as well to to increase our trading and our liquidity. Uh, and I think that will help uh, solve uh, a lot of the problems. So there's there's uh, room to improve there. And uh, the goal of this aggressive marketing campaign that we are uh, uh, pursuing right now, uh, as we also release the drilling results, uh, is uh, is intended to um, to solve that uh, you know that uh, that problem. Um, when might there be a full PEA for the bulk tonnage at Taurus? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, we might do it uh, next year, uh, but uh, it, it's something that is definitely not set in stone. Um, uh, I, I think uh, the, the first step would be to um, update the resource uh, early next year, uh, depending on the, you know, like let's see what the the rest of the drill results look like. Uh, but it, it seems very likely that we uh, we uh, can update uh, the the 43101, uh, especially if it's substantial increase and it it, it might be. Um, so uh, that would be the first step, and then taking that into consideration, we could we could do uh, a, a PEA, um, but um, it's something that hasn't been uh, decided yet. But it, it's definitely an option. Okay, thank you, uh, Stu. You might have some questions. Um, his camera's frozen. I'll go on to Gabe. Gabe. Sure. Hey, Marco. Um, okay. Hey. Uh, so, are all the defined resources um, on, in the project uh, inferred? Yeah. Yeah. As of now, yes. Uh, although after this drill campaign, uh, there might be uh, there might be a separation because uh, you know some 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 of the drill holes <clears throat> um, were. Uh, for example, we're, we're testing the the the, the at depth extensions. Uh, so you know they, when they start, it's an infill drill hole and it becomes extension. So depending on the density and grade, 
uh, of what we have there. There's a potential to upgrade that part of the resource, but uh, we only have the, you know, we'll only have clarity there at the, at the end of the drill program. Once we have all the results and we see how everything fits together, um, and uh, yeah, and only then can we have uh, some clarity on that. What is the expected timing of of that? I would say um, uh, no earlier than uh, January, February. Okay. Um, what is like the shape and the layout of the? Your internet seem, seems to be off. Um, you know, but maybe just comment, uh, I guess, the difference between Taurus and Table Mountain in terms of mineralization and, and tape and all yeah. that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so Taurus is, is really, uh, you know, bulk tonnage type resource. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, you know, it's d disseminated. Um, uh, in basalt, uh, so it's it, it's fairly homogeneous. Um, it's it's lower grade or bulk tonnage grade. Uh, I, I, well, I actually don't like to call it low grade because it's actually one and a half gram is a pretty nice grade. And you know, just just to name like uh, Victoria Golds, you know, their their head grade is zero point six five, and you know they're making their shareholders happy. So uh, you know, this is substantially higher than that, uh, and there's no overburden to speak of. But uh, so yeah, so this is uh, disseminated uh, gold uh, hosted in basalt. Um, so there's actually a, a sea of low grade uh, around um, around the resource. Um, so uh, there's a lot of potential by, for example, reducing the cutoff grade, uh, which could make a lot of sense um, given the new price, gold price environment, given the fact there's no overburden, uh, given that we continue to add ounces. Uh, maybe it, uh, it, it would make sense to lower the cutoff grade. So, um, so, so really, that's the the, the style of mineralization at Taurus. Uh, and then at Table Mountain, it's more uh, uh, this uh, this style of mineralization here. This is typically uh, high grade uh, gold in quartz veins. Um, they're like one to uh, three meters thick. Um, uh, you know they uh, they they usually surround the mafic units, so they're kind of like uh, uh, veins that come vertically and horizontally, um, kind of on a on a kind of a, a, a grid system. Uh, so so really we need to uh, you know we need to chase them, we need to uh, you know to find them and, and you know and and you know we need to drill them. Uh, so that's uh, that's that's really the focus for for 2021. Uh, of course, you know this this kind of grade uh, can be, you know, nothing better than showing a little bit of the uh, 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 historical production here. Uh, this is the kind of uh, this is the kind of grades that we can find there, and you know, and we're just scratching the surface. This style of mineralization usually is stacked. Um, you can look at, uh, you know, Barkerville from Osisco or uh, Fosterville from Kirkland Lake down in Victoria. Uh, these systems can go for hundreds and hundreds and you know thousands of meters, uh, so the potential is massive. Um, so uh, you know uh, when we say multi-million ounce potential, it's literally multi-million ounce potential. Uh, so um, and there's a lot of similar similarities between those two, and they've been you know documented quite heavily. You know Doug Kerwin as you know actually. Uh, uh, is an advisor for for a company that is located in uh, next to Fosterville, so he, he understands that mineralization quite well, and he sees the similarities are are striking. Uh, but you know, the only way to prove that is uh, you know by exploring it and drilling it, and that's uh, and that's what we plan to do with the 15,000 meters next year. Uh, Gabe, you have audio again. I think so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Okay. Right. Good. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, it's raining here. The um, I was just going to ask about the shape and the layout of the uh, inferred of the current resource. Um, yeah. If you could show that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's uh, uh, you can look uh, if you look at this long section, you can see uh, it's basically flat lying near surface. It's it's very shallow. <clears throat> there is like some little sections here uh, that are 
uh, you know, kind of away from the resource. Uh, but actually, these are the refractory part of the ores, which is next to the fault here. Uh, so, uh, it, you know, it, it's you know not not actually the most exciting part of our resource. Um, so, so yeah, so this would be amenable to uh, to to an open pit, uh, uh, in my opinion. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, so so you know it's 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 a it's a really good shape. You, you couldn't have a, a better shape. Um, but uh, uh, we are you know currently drilling to test uh, the you know extensions at depth as well as laterally. So this has a potential to 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 be a lot bigger. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, so let's yeah, see how big it gets. I mean, you yeah, I was gonna say. So, I mean, you're talking about it being bigger, and I, you are on the slide, so I might as well ask. You know, there's a 0.7 gram cutoff here in 2019. You know, I don't know what. Do you know what gold price that was? A thousand two hundred. Yeah. So, like current gold price environment, you know, where where do you think that cutoff would be, and what do the ounces look like, right? I I think he makes. I, I think it will make very little sense on this type of deposit, starting at surface, surrounded by infrastructure, no overburden, flat lying. Potentially an open pit. I wouldn't see any other way to mine this, but I'm not a mining engineer. Uh, I think 0 0.5, but more than 0 0.5 doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense, mm -hmm. in my humble opinion. But uh, you know, let's see what the technical team says. But uh, I, I think you know, um, 0 0.5 is uh, it, it's more than reasonable. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, Artie, you want to go next or Stu? Uh, I'm wondering about the uh, high-grade uh, past producing underground mines in the project area. Uh, what are their conditions and have you done any bulk sampling, bulk testing work uh, over there? Uh, from the high grades? Well, you have the, all the historical uh, production data. Uh, so, uh, so that's, uh, you know, that's a lot of information there. Uh, we have a lot of drill core uh, that are that are from these veins that actually never tested, um, because uh, the old timers they would drill, they would look at the cores like, oh, it doesn't look mineralized, you know, <laughs> put it away, uh, because you know if it's not if it's not more than uh, 15 grams, it's uh, it's waste. Um, so th there's a there's really a wealth of information there from uh, from the high grade. Um, the portals, uh, the portals themselves. Uh, so the old mine workings are, uh, uh, you know, they're uh, one one has collapsed and that the one is flooded. Um, I don't think we will be able to to use them. Uh, you know, this has to do with the mining regulation and permitting uh, to, to to drill from from the underground, which is you know it's a bit of a shame. But uh, uh, you know, we have other uh, geophysical techniques to uh, to help. Uh, uh, you know, in the, in the system is is really big, and there's a lot of veins. So, uh, you know, we'll we'll have to drill from surface. But uh, you know, there's uh, you know, we have a lot of we have a lot of information already. Uh, we uh, we have uh, you know, we know where the veins are uh, from uh, from all the mapping, uh, and uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, you know geophysical te techniques that we're doing, inclu including uh, you know, one of the one of them is uh, passive seismic. Uh, that we're doing uh, now to uh, to to help uh, you know find uh, try to highlight uh, some of the hot spots of uh, where the veins might be. Um, and can you generally comment on the access to the site uh, and how many mounts uh, you can drill? Yeah. So access to the site is really great. So we have. Highway 37 bisecting our property. Uh, this 5,000 meter drill campaign, you know, just to give you, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, it's just an indication of, of how logistically accessible and efficient uh, it is to operate here. We're drilling at uh, uh, our drilling program was $160 Canadian all in. Uh, so that's that's really competitive, uh, and the reason is because we have a camp, uh, we have all this infrastructure. Uh, the resource starts literally next to the highway, so it's it's you know so it's relatively easy to get there. So usually you think Northern BC it's remote, but uh, you know infrastructure is everything. Uh, so the fact that we have highway a highway bisecting our property, Highway 37, 
um, really helps. What was the second question? And how many months uh, you can still right? Uh, we so this gives you the picture of our property. So uh, looking from you know from basically here from the Cassier mine sites, which this is uh, an old uh, asbestos mine, it was a, one of the biggest mines in BC in the 60s and 70s. Uh, but uh, getting back to the picture, uh, so looking looking south, uh, you can see that basically there's a valley, and the resource itself sits on the bottom of the valley uh, as well as the mill. Uh, so on the bottom of the valley, we can generally operate throughout the winter. And our camp has been winterized to be able to do this. Uh, we won't be drilling this winter, uh, but uh, technically we could if we wanted to. Uh, so that it's definitely a possibility that one year from now we might be drilling throughout the winter, uh, and uh, it will be just you know a little bit more challenging and expensive. Um, uh, because it, you know it's still northern BC, so it's uh, you know it's not a tropical climate. Uh, but uh, uh, on the on the southern part of our property here at uh, South Cassiar, uh, Table Mountain, um, then it becomes more alpine as you can see. So drilling in the winter uh, can become a real challenge. So uh, you know here we can only basically have a five to six month uh, uh, drilling window. Thank you, uh, Stuart. Yeah, thanks, Marco. And sorry, I dropped out before. Um, the recent financing, how you mentioned there are some new uh, institutions that came in. Roughly, how much of the money came from existing shareholders versus new investors to the story? Uh, I would say 90% 90, 90 from new, new investors. That's great. And, uh, and uh, that 10% repeating offenders. <laughs> um, and then you mentioned earlier you expect final results mid-December. When do you anticipate commencing the, sec the next program for drilling? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so we'll be receiving res results from this drill campaign until mid-December, uh, unless there's delays in the lab. Uh, but uh, for for next season, we, we plan to start drilling at the South Cassiar in Q2 as soon as the weather allows. So um, uh, it, it's more of a snow thing. Uh, the, you know, the, the snow starts coming down here. Like you can actually see them, you know, the snow just creeping down the, the mountain, you know, the, as, uh, you know, September, October, November. Uh, and then you will see it receding, you know, February, March, April, May. So, uh, you know, as soon as the weather allows, we expect it, you know, April, May, June, um, more like uh, probably May. I think that's, uh, but, you know, it's it's weather dependent. So it's it's not, you know, an exact date. Yeah, understood. And have you kind of worked out a fair idea of, drill targets or are you waiting to get the final results here to plan the next drilling locations no so so yeah uh, uh no I, I think that's that's independent our focus you know uh, i mean don't get me wrong torres is great uh, and I, I i i personally like it's it's easy win you know you have uh, a, a resource it's open uh, you know, you know you're gonna get an easy. Well, you know it's highly likely you're gonna get an easy win by drilling uh, next to it and try to get extensions. Uh, but you're gonna get like one to two gram per ton extensions, which is great. Uh, but you know, what's more exciting than that is actually getting 15 grams per ton or 20 grams per ton or 25 grams per ton extensions. And I guess I can call it extensions because we already have an historical resource uh, at Table Mountain. Uh, so we know where some of the veins are, uh, uh, and uh, you know that's 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 basically our starting point. We we, we will start from uh, uh, the veins that uh, we are well, already know where they are. Uh, we'll try to, you know, we're building the model and refining the model to to understand the whole system and where all the veins or where the rest of the veins might be. But it's it's a circular process. Um, you know, it's an iterative process. So uh, uh, this this will be you know the, the initial targets are going to be around this. Uh, we will probably try to try to focus uh, on some of the uh, uh, horizontal veins uh, that are closer to surface. 
we're probably seeing some some deeper drill holes uh, you know maybe 500 600 meter deep uh, you know this system uh, could be you know could go forever uh, well not forever but uh, could you know could go a long way uh, and uh, you know as you can see from the picture of the mountain uh, you know if you have uh, uh, you know there's a if, if these veins start from the top, you know, it could just keep going down and down and down. Uh, so, um, um, yeah, there's, uh, you know, we, we'll, we'll need to sink some some deep, deep drill holes to try to find, uh, you know, uh, some of the deeper structures. Uh, but uh, we'll, the starting point will be the, you know, the easy one, which is the veins that already been identified and, 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 and figuring, figuring out where, where they go to. Yeah, okay. And on that map you had uh, with the concessions and the Cassiar town site, did you guys ever look at the uh, the, the ground around the old Cassiar mine? So the old Cassiar, uh, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, I, today I was actually looking at that. Uh, uh, the the old Cassiar mine was an asbestos mine. Uh, you know the stuff that people want to stay away from these days. Um, so. So it wasn't a gold mine, uh, but uh, it, it actually has the potential to. So it has like some uh, some some quartz veining, uh, but um, uh, you know it, it might have some potential. But uh, listen, we have fifty six thousand hectares. We uh, we you know we have a resource that it's open. We have high grade. We have an historical resource that is high grade. Multiple veins with all this infrastructure. We have all these roads. Uh, surrounding it, you know, our our geos go to mapping exercises. They come back with you know, uh, you know, uh, rock chips with visible gold. You know, uh, uh, we could add ground, uh, but uh, um, yeah, uh, uh, it's it, it's it's very hard to be more prospective than uh, you know, uh, drilling next to the a resource. Uh, or you know, being a, a 43101 or an historical resource, uh, yeah. So, um, so we're we're so basically, it's not you know, uh, long long story short, it's not in the plan to 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 add to our land package. But, but you know, if it's if we feel it's perspective, uh, it's um, you know we can actually add, add it, but you know we have 56,000 hectares, uh, and uh, uh, you know we have uh, more than we can chew. Fair enough, thank you. Um, what are your future plans for North Cassia? Are you planning a PFS at this moment in time? Uh, I think that's uh, you know well you know I think the first step is as I said the, the resource update in a, in a PEA uh, mm -hmm. potentially. Uh, so, you know, eventually, I, I think, I, I think, uh, Taurus, uh, as a resource is very attractive. It's a million ounces, 1.43 grams per ton, you know, in, uh, in, in Q1, if we do that resource update, it will be, you know, most likely bigger. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not sure if the grade will change or not. Uh, you know, hopefully it gets bigger too, but, um, uh, I, I think that it's it's uh, fair you know fairly fair to say that uh, you know the the resource will will probably be bigger. So I, I think this is an, an attractive uh, it's a, it's a very attractive asset for for a lot of people. Uh, we uh, we are now looking to start uh, approaching uh, some mid tiers in some uh, some of the biggest producers. I think uh, we are getting into. Uh, an environment where, especially with the big companies, uh, you know, having really cashed up balance sheets and uh, a very uh, steeply declining uh, reserve profile uh, and resource profile, uh, they will probably start looking into uh, taking over other companies, M&A, uh, or acquiring uh, projects or assets like this. So uh, this. Uh, I think something like Doris will be very attractive for for these kind of, kinds of companies. So you know maybe maybe one of those uh, companies uh, comes in. I don't know. It's uh, it's uh, uh, it, it's something that we should consider and we should we should pursue. Um, but um, but the focus really for us is uh, is is the high grade. Uh, that's where we get the, the biggest return 
on our investment. Uh, it's you know it's it's very it's very high grade and it's you know we're not drilling blind. Uh, it, this is a brownfield project uh, and uh, it's it's uh, with well un understood mineralization surrounded by infrastructure and uh, it has a multi-million ounce potential on its own. Uh, so so that's where we're going to be focusing um, ourselves. Uh, and uh, you know, but of, of course, we'll we'll try to we will keep on progressing. Uh, also, Taurus, there's a you know, it's a it's a very attractive asset. So um, there's 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 you know, two really good stories here. Um, you know, the old and uh, the end game question: what what uh, increase the resource and sell to a major, build it yourself, keeping your options open. What's uh, what's what's your thought? Well, the short yeah, the short answer is always keeping the options open. Uh, you know, we can't we can't be sitting around for a major to come and take us over. Uh, so yeah, and so we're we're building the resource. Uh, so uh, you know, trying to create shareholder value by adding high grade ounces, um, and bulk tonnage grade ounces, um, and uh, you know, uh, initiating conversations with those majors. Uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, keeping keeping an open mind to 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 what they might be uh, offering, um, but we, we cannot be just sitting uh, waiting uh, waiting for you know for them to to make an offer. So uh, so we'll we'll have to be ready to to progress things ourselves and create value regardless of what the majors uh, do. Can you tell us a little bit more about the permitted mill. Mm -hmm. um tons per day and how does that translate into uh uh gold you know ounces per year produced uh well it depends on the grade you put 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 through it uh but in a nutshell this is very small for what we have uh this uh uh well i'll have to get a calculator uh but uh um it's uh you know, it, it, it you know it it wouldn't be a, a very significant production. So if we go to a production scenario, we would definitely uh, need to increase this uh, this uh, this mill, upsize it. Okay. Um, will it be possible to to upgrade the mill or um, just build a new one or put one next door or? Yeah, to, to be honest, I, I'm not sure. Um, I, ha I haven't uh, I haven't looked at uh, at uh, at that uh, at that yeah. side of the things. Um, um, so I'll I'll have to get back to you on that. Um, if you if you could uh, just drop me the email of uh, of uh, who who asked the question, I can uh, sure. I can ask the technical team and, and see uh, if we had made any studies on this. If we did, we I I didn't see it um but uh yeah so i'm not sure if it would be like an upgrade or uh, or or a completely new one uh there we will have to look at things as as a fact that is permitted so you know having something permitted uh is is quite valuable so uh uh you know there's i think there's several considerations that need to be taken into account as well um so um yeah okay thank you I want to thank everyone for tuning in for your good questions and please uh, share feedback uh, with us. We'll get straight to Marco. And uh, you can follow uh, Kaziar Gold and usual social media places and Amvest Capital too. We both have frequent things to say. Uh, with that, uh, Marco, um, the closing statement. You have the floor. Thank you, Campbell. Now it's a pleasure to be here again. Uh, thank you all uh, very much uh, for listening uh, and watching. Um, you know, please, please do have a look uh, at what we have. I think we have a very compelling opportunity here. There's a lot of upside on the bulk tonnage, on the high grade. Uh, the valuation is still very attractive. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you'd like to know more, just visit our website, www.cassiargold.com or feel free to reach out to me. My email is marco at cassiargold.com. Thank you all very much for watching. Thank you. Marco. Have a great day and have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, guys. Have a great weekend.